We're with Ben Harris. This is Ben Harris's yard. Yeah. So why don't you show us a little bit about your project? This is a great little demonstration of what you do yeah. with your business, right? One of the main things I wanted to do with this was to hide the beginning of the stream and hide the end so that you can you, imagine that you've this is actually that. a real stream. Yep. This is the second pond I built, so this was another practice as well. Mm -hmm. But I really love Japanese gardens, so that's what I wanted to achieve with this. What was the initial idea to bring Ben in? We come from New Zealand. I just got back from New Zealand too. You know what the South Island rivers are like. Well there are lots of rocks and lots of stones, running water and I wanted to have a little touch of that in here. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. I'm with Brian Helfrich. Yeah. My main guy <laughs> who's now starting his 24th year with me. We are traveling around Australia. We are in Blackburn. Yes. Blackburn, Mel Victoria? Yeah, Melbourne. We're out somewhere yeah. in the suburbs. Would you of... ever guess we would do this 24 years ago? I would have never guessed this. I would have never guessed that he would have made it 24 <laughs> years with me. Me neither. Okay, we're with Ben Harris. This is Ben Harris's yard. Yeah. And you've lived here for how long, Ben? Uh, about five years. Five years. You got Riley here. How you doing, Riley? Good. Okay, so why don't you show us a little bit about your project, Ben, that you got at your house? This is a great little demonstration of what you do yeah. with your business, right? Yeah, it is, absolutely. It's a display garden for potential clients to come around and have a look. So this is a pondless stream, so... One of the main things I wanted to do with this was to hide the beginning of the stream yep. and hide the end so that you can you, imagine that you, you've this is actually a, a real stream yep. that we just happened to plant a garden around. It's literally spectacular. I also wanted to show you like the, the, the speed as well, the gentle sound. Yep. It really plays with the sound on this one. So, it's quite so you work out of your house, right? Yeah. So do you invite customers over here to Absolutely. see what how you live the aquascape lifestyle Absolutely. yourself? Absolutely. Yeah. This is just terrific. So when did this get installed? Uh, this was four to four and a half years ago. Okay. This is the first one the stream I built. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. Quite, quite talented, the huh? first one, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. First one, so this was my practice, because yes. I decided, oh, this is actually what I really want to do. Amen. So. The first one, and then I'll build a pond out the back as well. Well, you have some incredible talent. Let's go check out that backyard one too. The backyard can't be more than 30 foot by 25 foot or so. I was sitting over there and I did not want to leave. That was my yeah. only downside. So talk to me a little bit about this. I guess this is the second pond I built. So this was another practice as well. Mm -hmm. But I really love Japanese gardens. So that's what I wanted to achieve with this. A beautiful Zen Japanese yep. space to, to enjoy. You've, uh, you've achieved green. that. And you actually went to Japan to study, correct? Yes, I did. So. so a small little water feature like this, approximately how long would it take you and what would you charge for it? This would take me probably two to three weeks, including all the garden. Charge, you'd probably be looking at about twenty-five to 30000 To just completely like transform the space. Now, Brian, one of the things that we like to talk about is most backyards are just gravel or grass out here, and then you come back here, you would never expect this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at how it's transformed this space. And, and really, you touched on it before, it's, it can't be 30 feet wide, maybe 12, 15 feet deep. You've taken a very unique space to its fullest potential, mm. right? Brian, I was sitting there. I mean, there's not a person that would walk back here that would not want to go back and sit in that. You're drawn back here. And in this project, Ben, you've really achieved the same thing you did in the front yard one, too. You can't tell where it starts or where it ends. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, the pond sits right here, Greg, and the skimmer would be right there. Yep. He's taking the skimmer and hitting it way back in there so you don't see where the filter system sits. And the stepping stones are fantastic. I know you were mm. sitting here, but I just want to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still getting used to that time change. Yeah. yeah. So oh there's what God. Brian was talking about. Look at how the plants of everything's being incorporated in here. This is the whole Zen type of a feel, you know, is what you studied. Yeah. How long has this garden been established? You said four and a half years for the front? Yeah, this is four years as well. Okay. So 
It's amazing that in four years you can have this level of transformation. And Greg, you don't have to really have um, a big, big pond or giant pumps and really fast moving water to have that relaxing, you know, aquascape lifestyle feel. And look at this, the pond can't be but eight foot by six foot, right? And, and it feels incredible. In fact, anything bigger in here would be out of scale. Mm -hmm. I love too how, um, you know, as you walk through it, you discover you're constantly brushing up the plant, you know, against the plant. So you're really paying attention to what's around you and your surroundings. What kind of clients do you like to work with, Ben? Like if you were to say a good fit for you for your business? All the clients that I work with, they're down to earth. Uh -huh. Really down to earth. So people who really just love nature. Uh -huh. I find as well that most of the clients I work for, like they trust me. And I'm always amazed by that because at the end of their job, they'll tell me, I actually didn't know it was going to look like that. It looks amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I think, well, how the hell did you... It was a leap of so faith. And Brian, you yeah, talk about this a little bit. About that all the time. Yeah. There's not a drawing in the world you can do. There's not uh, the amount of spray paint you put on the ground that really... Yeah. gives the customer what they're talking about. So I always tell customers, I know you have no idea what I'm talking about. You know, it's going to start here, it's going to end here, yeah. but at some point, you're taking a huge leap of faith and trust into what mm. I'm doing. And I don't know if I could personally make a decision like that, but yeah. our customers do it all the time, and obviously... Yeah. We're going to go see some of your customers today and uh, see that yeah. leap of faith that they took, which yeah. will be really exciting. And you can hear the water falling in the aqua blocks that sit below. Front yard water feature. That's the entire area planted in grass. And then look at how much landscaping. You want to up the Joneses, take out the grass, put in a water feature, and beautifully landscape it up. So you can see the moss, and you can see the moss goes under the water. And the reason it grows is this is on a timer. It shuts off every night at 11 o'clock and goes on every morning at 6 a.m. And so the moss literally just grows. And listen to that sound. The landscaping is so important to soften everything up. It's just not stones. It's as much plants as it is rocks. And because of that, it looks natural. Sedums growing over on the edges. I mean, look at how much rock is in this area versus plants. And look at yeah, look at how natural it looks. It literally, this pond, this waterfalls, is probably 50% plants and 50% stones. And that's why it looks so natural. And then a, once again, a bridge that you just wanna walk over. Birds, butterflies, Everything is out here because it's nature. It's welcoming nature into your yard. So Brian, what do you like about this in a front yard? People don't think that they can put a pond in their front yard. Look at how private it is. I mean, if you drive down the street, you have no idea that there's a water feature there, right? Like, you have no idea. You see the house, you can obviously tell he's into the landscape, right? He's got some privacy with the hedge there. He's got some really neat plants. I'd love to tell you the name of all the plants. Right, but, but it's Australia, <laughs> right. yeah. And then you come and you see the bridge. A bridge means you're usually crossing something. What Ben has done here is he's really slowed that water down. So you don't even hear the sound of it until you've gotten to the bridge. Yep. And then just look at how peaceful it is. I mean, it's a pretty big feature in a front yard. Mm -hmm. And you don't discover it until you've really gotten to this point. It's hidden. Yeah. And it creates a sense of mystery. And you actually said this, you didn't want people to know where it started or where it ended. And I still can't figure out where it started. <laughs> We've been here for a half hour. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> wow. You know how much, Greg, I like bridges. My pet peeve is a bridge that leads to nowhere. And this bridge actually takes you on a journey. It takes you to the front door of the house. Right. Or it takes you back around the corner of the house. Yes. And what an awesome way to be greeted or to greet somebody up to the front of your house, to cross a bridge and, and that stream. And this is his first pond list. I know, he's right? talented, yep. I think what's so amazing is this is also his shop. And so he's built a front yard water feature, a backyard water feature, but he also does his whole business out of here. Yes. And talk about being organized. If you're gonna run your business out of a little carport like that, you have to be pretty organized. And so come look at how he's got everything laid out. Yeah, okay. I think this is actually pretty inspirational to our other contractors out there that are doing this. I think what you were trying to say is that it doesn't take a huge operation to have no, success look, in got, this industry. He's got a pickup truck. He's got some fabric. He's got some miscellaneous parts. You don't need a giant yard to work out of. You don't need huge equipment. This reminds me of how we got started, right? It was the pickup truck. Yep, worked out of my house. Barrel, some shovels, and we worked out of your house every single day. And it, this reminds me so much of what we did at your place. 
And I remember every single day somebody being <laughs> late to work <laughs> well, when he was 18. Were, you weren't organized like this. <laughs> Very good. Awesome. This is excellent. Hey, if you guys like this stuff, if you like seeing what certified aquascape kayakers are doing all over the world, if you like seeing beautiful aquascape water features, like, comment, and subscribe, and follow along, and check out the Team Aquascape page to see what the construction looks like. Good stuff. Let's go see some beautiful aquascape ecosystem water features. I'm Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy, and we are out traveling around Australia visiting Ben Harris's water feature projects with the boss, Riley. Yep. And uh, Ben, boss, what? this is one of your ponds or pondlesses? Pondless, he's a pondless strand. Okay. Yes, thank you. And I'm the Pond Guy, Greg. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So this is your lovely garden, huh? Uh, this is our quiet little patch, yes. I like that, a quiet little patch. Yes, I already hear the pond. Kind of a front yard again, Brian. It looks like. Tell me about the stone. Where's the stone come from? There's two different types of stone here. There's the flat stones, the highland slate that uh -huh. come from New Dalesford, and then there's some chunkier rock that's from Casella, which is uh, northeast of Melbourne. So there's two different types, but they it looks mix well. Very, very similar to each other. Yeah. I love the way you've done the stepping stones and just <laughs> carried it through all the way up to the, the other patio yeah. area up there. So that's really intended nice. to be uh, the walk to the front door, which is behind us. This walks out to the street out here? Yes. Okay. What was the initial idea to bring Brent in? We come from New Zealand. Did I just got back from New Zealand too. Did you go to the South Island? I did. Okay, so you know what the South Island rivers are like. All I know is that everything was breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are lots of rocks and lots of stones uh -huh. and running water, and I wanted to have a little touch of that in here and Ben's done that and we think it's wonderful. How long ago did you put this in, Ben? Oh, I think around three years ago. Okay. And how did you find Ben? Uh, a friend of mine who lives out of town, and Ben had done a very different stream for her, mm -hmm. and I love the way it looks so natural. Hers is an Australian stream, and I wanted something a bit different, and Ben just seemed to have a good feel for rocks yeah. and water. I love how you've tied them in through the landscape, too. It's not just a vein of rock running through the one section of the yard. There's a big piece here, there's some out in the front, so mm -hmm. even as you come down through the driveway, you kind of get a taste of what's about to be back here, which is so nice. What do people say that come to your house for the first time and hear that water? Oh, people are blown away. And they say, I didn't know there was a stream running through this area. They think it's, it's natural. Which is the ultimate compliment to a contractor. Exactly. And the rocks have, I don't know, Ben's just placed them beautifully. Spent a long time working it out, didn't you? Yeah, it takes a while. Yeah, it's, well, the rocks great. talk to you. Brian, you want to talk about that? How do the rocks well, talk to you? I like to admit it to everybody, especially to all these people that you <laughs> see in this, but... Yes, there's something that, you know, I build ponds back home in the Chicagoland area and um, the rocks kind of speak to you, you know, and, and so when, when you're placing a rock, it says I, want, I need to be used for a waterfall or I should be used for a stepstone and you see that because mm. you've ordered some flatter ones mm. for this area, which you couldn't use for building up a waterfall because Mother Nature would never stack rocks on top of each other, so you need the chunkier ones for this. And so customers always ask, how do you know where to place them? And, well, I don't. They tell me where they're supposed to go, right? Do you, you think? Do you think that's a little crazy? The rocks talk to them. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, it's so nice with the waterfalls is you get the opportunity to make different types of sounds, and this one's got that really deep, babbly brook sound. And the reason that happens is a couple of reasons. One, you know, Ben's done a great job with taking these two stones, pushing them closer together. When you do that, the water will get a little thicker. It looks thin, but it's actually about that thick. And thicker water, as it comes down, will create a deeper sound. The other reason you get that deeper Babbly Brook type sound is because there's more of a plunge pool down here. It's not really shallow. If I were to actually take the same waterfall, drop it into really shallow gravel, you get this higher treble sound. I always let our customers know too, if you ever wanted to like, kind of tweak the sound to your own liking, you can do things like just adding a rock in here. Now listen here, if I just put my hand in here and pretend this was a rock, how much different the sound is. So as that water comes down and hits something, it creates a much, much different sound. So we always leave a couple extra rocks for homeowners to play with it and tweak it themselves. But I don't know why you would change a single thing on this project. It is perfect. Amen. 
And if you like this stuff, like, comment, and subscribe so more people could see this stuff. And check out the Team Aquascape page, which is all about the construction of beautiful Aquascape ecosystem water features. I love my job and dogs too.